Hey everyone, I'm Rather Than Coherent, and we're out of troops. We have another mission in three days and four people left on the Avenger. Every spare second we've got, we're at Tipler HQ scanning to heal faster. The infirmary is nowhere in sight. It turns out that stopping two dark events simultaneously was a little bit more than I was able to manage. That's not necessarily true, because it remains to be seen that this has any consequence other than immense stress for me. But I think that we're probably going to have to pass on a mission somewhere at the end of the month. We've already done the terror mission. There's only one more mission left for the dark events. What's the date? The 14th? Like, this is rough, but... Expires in zero hours, huh? Okay, let's not hang out on the screen then. <laughs> let's stay on this menu. I think we're good. I think we can do it. Going into today's mission, though, who do we have? We have the Pioneer Ashen Fortress, because of course we do. We've got a pair of low-ranking sappers, because these rookies that were supposed to be for covert ops? Yeah, no, they're core soldiers. We need them. It's not that Cyclone's going right back out. He's supposed to sit pretty in the Avenger and go on a mission to sack his hacking. That's not happening. Black Cat and Lunatic Supernova were supposed to finish healing their will. That's not happening. They're going right back out. Twilight Queen, instantly on another mission, no time to rest, same for Liquid Danger. We've got the Mag Rifles on our Medic and Marine. We've got the Experimental Mag, as Scope, and the Bipod here, giving him better long-range accuracy, and Tracer Rounds for even better accuracy. Flashbang on the Medic, the Exalt Long Lance into Bow Rounds and Shadowkeeper, the whole shebang on Black Cat. A Flashbang on Twilight, or sorry, a Flashbang on Silence. Twilight's got absolutely fuck all, they've got a frag grenade and base kit. I guess I can improve that a little bit. I can give them a rail pistol. And over here for our sappers, you got a frost bomb, you got the normal stuff. But this is not a bad team. If you're going to have a couple of low-ranked guys and be out of troops, this is the way to do it. It's explosives on our low-ranked rookies. Now, even though this is the dregs, every mission all campaign has been the dregs. This doesn't feel like a weak squad. It feels like we can handle it. We're missing Combat Engineer and Assault, that never feels good, but I think we can make do. We've got the Pioneer, we've got Double Sapper. The fact that every mission all campaign has been the dregs does make me think that maybe we just need more soldiers. Maybe I should have started with two to four more, maybe I should have set Living Space to 45 at level zero. Those are all thoughts for future campaigns though. For this campaign, we're gonna have to power through. We might hire more rookies and we might prioritize that last living space upgrade, but we can't do more than that. Before any of that, though, we have a filled commander to kill. No sit reps. Well, none that matter. We get prizes from the people who are there that like us. But it's a difficult mission. I'm expecting at least four pods. Might get lucky and only see three. I should probably equip my weapon mods. No reason to handicap myself artificially. Okay, we've added laser sights all over the shop. A couple of other mods that aren't super important. Let's get in there, let's do this. It's time for the sewers again, not a fan of that. Operation Shaven Wolf, let's get in there. Just gonna blue move forward with the medic, see what he sees. Nothing, gonna take this position, look a little bit further. We've got Stun Lancer General, oh, we found the General immediately. That's very nice. I would like my sniper on high ground braced, but it's not looking like it's that kind of sewers. In that case, I'll just put him in full cover on the side. I think I have a Marine on this mission. There's Liquid Danger. Can't get where I need him to be. Can't get anywhere close to where I would want him to be. I don't think they can ever get far enough to punish me for running at them, to be honest. Did I move my Reaper immediately? I did. I thought that was my Sniper. Well, this is just a mess, then. I'll put my sniper in the middle then, that's where I wanted my marine to go. I'm going to move around to the left side and scout for enemies to side at Cyclone just because he's fast, thanks to the bullpup. This is a safe position, I can just look out here, they can't ever walk up on me. Ashen Fortress is going to move as far forward as possible in the hopes of getting an incinerator ambush off next turn. Frantic Nightingale is going to be doing the same. And we can't quite get to good cover here, so I'll send Revolver Ocelot around on the side. Alright, let's see where they go. If they walk towards us, they're dying immediately. Oh shit, check that out! Black Cat automatically braced because she dashed. Look at her being a high-ranked sniper. Alright, they moved towards us, but not by a whole lot. 
Now, these incinerators have pretty far range, but I don't think they're... Okay. I'm only hitting two guys, though. And they're uncomfortably far away. Let's move some people up around the flanks. Get an eye on what's going to happen after this. When they deploy and they go in this room, what else are we going to have to... Oh, Jesus. Was that one time? I think that was our first pod of seven. I think we had multiple coin flips. We might be at force level five. That was big. Maybe it was two pods stacked on each other and we got the vision of both from seeing this guy. I hope that's what it was. I don't want that to be a pod of seven. We have a lead the target on Black Cat, don't we? I can take this on the general. And I'm pretty sure I have a 100% on all of these guys with lead the target. I've got a... 99% on the general. But I could lead the target here for 6 to 8 damage, right? The incinerator is 3 to 6. So that's minimum 9. That's not a kill on the general. I'm going to move forward side at Cyclone. Oh, if they come this way and pet him, though, or even worse, they just see him. Yeah, never mind. That's insane. What am I talking about? The only thing side at Cyclone can do this turn is move to here. We know we can't engage if they move this way. If they keep coming towards us, we can engage them. All Ashen Fortress can do is Overwatch, but they're never going to find him anyway, so he's really just fine where he is. Frantic Nightingale can take the opportunity to move forward to here. They're never going to find him. Apparently that was a yellow move, but I just didn't realize it. Whatever. We're doing our best to move up. There's just not a lot of great spots here. Twilight Queen needs to get out of this position and move left. She can scout that way later. And that position, being high cover, definitely goes my Marine, not her. Evolver Ocelot can move up to this half cover. Black Cat's not doing anything this turn. She's just overwatching. I could lead the target and pull them over their turn. I think I want them to move closer to us and get something done with these sappers. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm getting done with the sappers, but I don't want to pull right now. If they don't come towards us, they just go left, it's fine. Alright, so it is two pods on top of each other, thank god. I thought that was too many for seven, I thought that looked crazy dense. So we've got two huge pods and the general all walking around over there. That's great. That's fine. I'm going to move to here with Cyclone and see where their vision actually extends to. This says we're safe. Alright, I think I'm just moving Ash and Fortress all the way up. That's probably wrong. I probably want that spot going to, like, Black Cat or my Marine. Just not my Spark that wants to be sprinting full forward all the time anyway. Well, they can't reach it this turn anyway, so it's fine, I guess. If they're coming this way, they could catch me. There's not really a safe place here. We see them moving up, so this actually should be a safe location. They're not going to catch me from the left this turn, that's for sure. I can move out my Reaper. Alright, now that I can see them a little bit better, we got a Purifier, a Stun Lancer, a Trooper, and a Viper. It's only four, and then a pot of six here, a little bit more threatening, but no big troops like a Viper. Good openings can neutralize the stuff pretty easily, but we have to actually, you know, get the good opening for that to happen. I'm going to pull back this way and try to get a better position. I wouldn't mind getting up top and taking a lot of pot shots at people during the fight that's bound to happen here. And it looks like we're just moving here. We're getting a position on this area, and the fight is happening here. It is going to be a nightmarish race where all of us are involved. It's going to be like 15 active at once, but there's nothing we can really do about it. If the general does turn around right now, it could be problematic. Oh, very nice. The officer pod is leaving. If they keep going that way, then we can definitely take a fight in this area. That would be fine. And the general keeps walking away. Perfect. Since we don't have a timer until we activate, it looks like we're just going to be able to wait for an insane ambush. So what I'm seeing here... 
Is this, like, this is nonsense. It says that if I go here, I don't get caught, but if I go here, I do. I'm gonna save and check that. Because if this is the case, then what I'm learning is I can jump diagonally, it just isn't displayed that way on the screen. I'm pretty sure this pulls and I'm just being lied to though. You can jump diagonally, but the screen doesn't display it correctly. I think if I move side at Cyclone first, I might just be able to get Liquid Danger in the position I want him in. Yes, that... No, no, go around the other way. I uh, still one tile short. In that case, I'll just take this position. No one's in range of it now. It gets me in the position I want to be next turn, probably. I'll take top positions up here with Frantic Nightingale. It's not a great spot to be, really. We're just trying to get forward in general. There's not a lot of ground for us to be, especially with an eight-man squad. It's so cramped. I'm going to move here on Black Cat and just brace. Supernova is going to run up to here, not really doing anything. And I can sprint to this location on my Reaper and just get them out of this cluster. Because we don't have space to breathe right now. I get here moving on my left. Which, you know, big surprise. They're still walking away from me. Everyone's just been walking away from me for several consecutive turns now. It's starting to upset me. However, I can use this time to pick up some prizes from our resistance friends. Whatever they're giving me. They could be anything. They've only got like three tiles of vision. They'd have to walk all the way around. They've been walking pretty slowly. So I should be able to come just take this loot too. Alright, there's another pod up there. Big Viper pod. We've got three pods total. They're all kind of just surrounding this guy. Could you stop rattling, Mr. Viper? Okay, side at Cyclone. Remind me, is there a pod just like on the other side of us right now waiting to kill us? It doesn't look like there is. Yeah, no. Uh, the Viper pod, I think, has patrolled down away from us pretty far. I guess we're moving up? <laughs> like, I feel so uncertain. The enemy's just not particularly interested in fighting us. Which is weird. It's kind of unnerving. To be fair, they legitimately don't know that we're here, so it makes sense that they don't want to fight us. It's only corner cover, but at least it's cover in both directions. The Spark's gonna have a hard time getting anywhere good. I guess this is the best we're doing for now. And we can take this bit of cover on Lunatic Supernova. We're really just waiting for them to turn around and come fight us. Or somebody to turn around and come fight us. Everything's patrolling away from us and we're trying to get a good ambush. But they're all just walking away from me. Do I smell bad or something? You can tell me. I won't be upset. I just want to know why everyone's leaving. So that pod I saw was right next to them. They're back here. I think one pod is patrolled this way, away from everyone. Get to the high ground full cover, take a look around, figure out what's happening, please. Just move down to here and keep a watch on this. This is manageable. This is like nine enemies. It's a lot, but we can handle it. The hard part is getting into a good position to engage from. And we can't have line of sight here, but that should be easy. This is as far as I can get with Frantic Nightingale. I can make it to this half cover. We're not going to be able to put many people on this side, it looks like. I say as I immediately find a spot to put somebody. Fine. Side at Cyclone. It's going to be taking that spot I was talking about a hot second ago. Like, all of these are going to be filled. We don't have a choice, really. Lunatic Supernova can take this part. I think... What I should have done at some point was a lead the target Overwatch trap. What somebody doesn't walk away from me, I'll have my chance to do it. But it just hasn't happened. 
They've been walking away from me nonstop. Last turn, I think, I had a chance for a lead the target Overwatch trap and didn't take it. Oh my god, someone's finally come to party. Alright. Advent General, just walk around the corner. Or don't. That's fine too, honestly. But I'd prefer to fight just one pod. If the Sun Lancer's out of vision, that's amazing. Okay, this is our lead the target Overwatch ambush turn. We've never gotten to do this before. He's pinned. He's not moving anywhere. I mean... Like, yeah, I could do lead the target Overwatch ambush. That's an option. But, you know... Why bother? What's even the point? Fine. Fine. Let Ash and Fortress do the gross thing again. Yep. Pretty damn gross. <sighs> oh, we have vision on this. I didn't think we did. That's fine. Advancing is a little bit harder than I expected it to be now. I'll admit it. Now, Sniper, what are you seeing? You have a 96% on the Gatling. 94% on the Stud Lancer. That sounds like the thing to be doing. Back and die to Shotgun Chip. Let's knock out this Stun Lancer in the back, please. Black Cat killing it. You want some more? Thank God. Me? That makes things so much simpler for us. Now, the fire is admittedly impassable. I can't just hurl a flashbang into the back line, but first, we've got a Reaper back here. It's not just for fun. 100% to finish off the Gatling Trooper, 0% to reveal because we have the Shadow Stacks. Get him out. Now we can reposition. Somehow I think that going for the loot might be wrong in this circumstance. If somebody steps right there, they might see me. I guess the same thing's true with this angle, right? It's always going to be a possibility. If I move here, I basically can't be flanked. The only way to see me is to come up the ladder. I guess the real question is, what do I want to do next turn? Shoot somebody who happens to be open? I'm going to move here. It probably doesn't matter at all, but that seems marginally safer. I wonder what the accuracy on point blank is from this quest. He's probably just going to blow up the wall, all my cover, and pull a pod if I do that, though. So let's just not. Let's just not. I need a shotgun chip on that stun lancer. I need this viper dead. Do I have a combat protocol target that looks good? Not really. I am just going to reposition and throw a grenade, but there's not really a great position to go to. You I'm going to come forward here on my medic. And see if I can't get a grenade just far enough. Just far enough. Oh, the cover's still there, though. All we've done is open line of sight to places we don't want to go. Speaking of open line of sight to places we don't want to go, um, about that right flank. Going to move right here on Silent Cyclone. And I'm going to take this frag to knock out this cover. Now someone should be able to finish him easily enough. Liquid Danger cannot move and get into cover. We have line of sight this turn. We can't avoid it. So Liquid Danger moving is pointless. Frantic Nightingale's job is to chip this Stun Lancer. Good job. Not that you could ever have failed, but good job. I appreciate you being here with a shotgun. I'll take the 87 here and then suppress the purifier. Seeming like a pretty solid strategy at the moment. If he tries to do anything, we'll probably get the kill. But, I mean, no guarantees. Revolver Ocelot can... Oh. Well, that actually seems like it was obviously better, and I didn't realize he had this movement option available. Okay, maybe it wasn't better. How did I see? Oh, the hole I blew in the wall. 
Look, sometimes things don't go according to plan. You think you're just gonna put a nice cozy hole in the wall and it results in you dying. It happens. I'd probably have pulled them anyway when he blew out the hole just there. Yeah, you uh, really shouldn't have blown out all the walls that kept you safe. Or just like, don't get hit, I guess. Fine. I don't understand. Oh man, this is so dangerous. Uh, liquid danger could- oh, you're going all the way over here. I would personally have focus fired liquid danger, but you do you. Liquid danger could have been in a lot of danger here, but he's looking like he might just be fine. No, he's not just fine. Okay. It's like they're playing XCOM and I'm the Advent Troopers. The RNG is just completely backwards to what I'm expecting. Okay, I've got wounds on soldiers, but none of them are major, none of them are a big problem. We all are ocelots is not on fire and didn't fall. So, you're not stunned anymore, you lost one action. Two damage there, two damage here. You just need to not be here anymore. You need to be somewhere else. Even this location is fine. If we clear out this flank, so now we have to clear out that flank. Because this character has... Oh, he's got better odds than I thought he would. Well, I guess I just take the shot then. 92 with a roll for kill? That's fine. I would obviously prefer to have killed him, but that's fine. I can just move this character up a little bit, take the shot from the other flank. 100% to finish it off. Good job, Silent. What do you have eyes on? You got eyes on a med drone. We got eyes on an officer with 66% to kill. Purifier, guaranteed kill. Purifier, guaranteed kill. I need to sort this out, and it's going to make it safe to move Liquid Danger. Alright, that gives Liquid Danger a safe space. This ladder is a little bit sketchy, but we're fine. Because the only person who's coming up that ladder is already dead. I have almost no ammo. That's fine. Almost isn't nothing. Also, it turns out that we're still so stealthy, we can walk to here. All right, there's no cover there, though. We can just move back here. And there's no path up to us. So we're gonna keep dancing around. Liquid danger, you need to get out of line of fire from everyone because you are in grave danger. Point blank on the drone, may as well. I think he has the mag shorty, but if he doesn't, I'm gonna be real embarrassed about it. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. I'm aware that Liquid Danger could still be flankable, especially by this officer. I'm trying to figure out who best to move to deal with that. I don't know if I have time for this loot. I don't think anyone's over here with a shot. I don't know where the general is. I think he's just over here. Yeah, I have a marker over him. So the general should never have a flank shot. I think even full sprint, he doesn't get here. But I do think I need to overdrive and come deal with this officer. Seven damage. All right, let's overdrive and kinetic strike the officer. That's the start of our turn. Once we've done that, we'll figure out what else we need to do. It's still getting weapon range bonuses of various numbers, oftentimes a zero. And I don't know why. It was not a one mission thing. Regardless, this is a 78, which is what it's supposed to be. No weird broken bonus is being given to me this time. Let's see if we can't kill this man. I should have went on the other side to have a flank shot if I missed, but yeah, that's fine. We can see that there's no clear flanks available for Liquid Danger, so what next? We have a shield bass for a chance to kill here, but I'd be really worried about pulling line of sight and getting that pod back. So I'm going to ignore him. I don't want to hit a purifier. I should have a move on the action so I can just move here and look at the general. 
We have a one action left. We could shield bash him. 53%. That's probably not as good as this. So we're just going to take the incinerate, start working on the general. And the general's the only soldier I'm really afraid of having any sort of kill on Liquid Danger, and no one except Liquid Danger is really in any danger. So I'm just focusing really hard on this instead of dangling him in front of people. And besides, the purifier's probably out of range. I could be wrong on that, but it doesn't feel like he's in range to do anything. Oh, I haven't even used Revolver Ocelot this turn. I might just kill the purifier. I can move here and take a flank shot with a lot of close range. It's not guaranteed to kill. No but if I chuck a defensive mine over the cover first, it will be. Give your new friend this defensive mine in case you don't manage to kill him. But you probably do. I mean, just roll good on damage. This is why we have defensive mines. Last up, Lunatic Supernova. Black Cat's already further back, so I know that this is safe for me. And I just need to be getting towards something. Oh, that was Frantic Nightingale, not Lunatic. Okay, Advent General's burning. Doesn't know what to do because there's a giant robot with a flamethrower. Gunslinger's running up. Holy. That is not a flank I knew you had. You shouldn't be able to kill with the pistol, though, so... Liquid Danger's okay. Were most of those not even flank shots? Man, for a suicide face-off, that was kind of sad. The worst thing that did was put another damage on Liquid Danger and give him a longer time in the hospital. <laughs> well, I don't have cover anymore, so that's a bit sketchy, but it was the last action of the turn. It's fine. I'm pretty sure anyone can kill that. I might be better off just reloading. Do I have snapshots now? Oh my god, I do. I can just take the snapshot afterwards for the still guaranteed kill. Dating bullets, removing soldiers at the same time. Very nice. Who's keeping score? Lunatic can grab this loot. We do have the time. The situation is getting well under control. All that's left is the general. If I move here, I'm pretty sure I can blue canister, destroy all the cover, and get other people's shots on him. The thing on the wall is going to be indestructible anyway, actually. Well, we can just test that from where we currently are. In fact, we can probably just blue canister twice and kill him if we're rolling well on hits. Blue canister doesn't actually destroy cover, I'm learning. Even though it's an explosive canister. Probably for the best, this thing's already incredibly strong. Good job, Ashen Fortress. You're ridiculous. That's how it's done. We need to clear the area of any remaining hostiles. We can't allow Just get him moving back in case I need to body. sprint into combat. I'm probably going to want to reload, but not necessarily able to right now. Um, why is Ashen Fortress selectable? Reloading. He's able to reload. I think he has a non-movement action. Honestly, I'm not even sure why. He's so high ranked that he has that perk now. When he kills somebody, he gets a non-movement action. Wild. Absolutely wild. What a strong unit. I know he's my highest ranked unit, and he's supposed to be unlocked at a tech level that you get to about now. But it's staggering how strong he is. I think if I were bringing my first Pioneer Spark on this mission... Where is he? I've got it lost. I think if this were, like, a mission or two before my first Pioneer Spark, and then I brought out my first one, and it had the base level of aim, which is actually, I think, the same level, so that's not important. But the base level of abilities... It wouldn't be so crazy, but having had it for a month, maybe a month and a half before this point where the units just don't stand a chance of killing it and it's getting the rank ups to be here. I think a thing I would do in the future to balance this is lock researching the uh, first mech tech that gives you the mech behind mech Rex. That way you have to wait till force level five or at least like a lucky ambush in force level four. Cause this is probably too much. Eventually he'll be a colonel when he should be a colonel and it'll be fine, but for now he's just ridiculous. Now, I'm not too safe to run down in the open, but I think this should be safe. It looks like they're still... Oh! Nope! I got eyes on them, I just didn't realize they did. So they're here. They could come through in either direction. We want to be overwatched though, that's the real point. I probably should have just reloaded in overwatched, honestly. 
Gonna take this position. Want to avoid pulling through here if it's the only line of sight I would have. We follow our Ocelot, just gonna be sprinting forward. Oh, he should have gotten the prizes. Why does we pick Supernova have one action right now? Whatever, I'll pick up the prizes on him next turn. Silent Cyclone's going to Overwatch. He's not going to hit it, but he's going to try. They run in, we get vision, we take our shots. That's rough, buddy. This is also pretty rough. Stuff's happening, you know, um, something. I don't know what this glitch is. It's almost 100% a mod. And when I, oh, we're back. And when I find out what mod, I might want to disable it. Oh, we're gone again. We're back again. We're gone again. And we're back, but we're still gone. Let's save and reload. If anyone knows what mod that is, please tell me. Okay. What does it look like we did? We hit the Viper. If yeah, somebody's dead. I think they were originally a pot of four. I remember being surprised how small they are. Good job not getting caught. It's very impressive. So, what can we do to help out the situation here? We have two sappers and haven't fired a grenade all mission. It's kind of wild. Going to move up and fire a grenade, which is why I was thinking about that. My <laughs> Reaper is not in a great position. What I might do is just move to here and kill the trooper. I'm not leaving anything up in a purifier this turn. These are the last four enemies. So I can actually just walk into the open and it's fine. We are known to them. I uh, like no enemy is living that's actually shooting a gun, so cover doesn't matter. Unless I got 4% in there, but I mean, if that happens, it happens. Oh, also, I get to do this now, so I'm not even in the open. Right. Yeah, you're a hit and run scout from Long War 1. It's insane. Anyway, like I was thinking about a second ago, we want this grenade. Ah, uh, but we can't get his full cover. We might still get his full cover. Also, we could just- Oh no, I don't want to kill him! He has loot! No! I didn't pay attention. I was so happy that the glitch was gone. It's fine. We low rolled. His cover's still here, but shotgun chip, it's fine. Reload your gun. Kill the stun lancer, please. Probably should see if my sniper has an angle on any of this, but it's going pretty well. I can't imagine Black Hat sees anything here. Yeah, no. Not even close. Just dash up. You, it doesn't matter, but may as well. I can talk to this person, get some prizes. Really playing like everything's at stake, aren't I? Now, Revolver Ocelot was over here. I can just move up and chip shot this Viper. I've also got a frag on the Advent Purifier if anyone else can take him out. I can come up here and try to kill the Viper. It's not a good shot, but it's a shot. 31% to maybe not kill him this turn and do stuff to the purifier instead. Uh, it happens. Ash and Fortress not in range to do what I wanted to do, sadly. But it's fine. We still have the kill here. The purifier lives for a turn. It's not a big deal. Let's see what he does. What do you think the right play is, Mr. Purifier? Did you see that one? Run and try. Oh my god, he doesn't even have line of sight, so the, the Reaper's concealed again. He thinks the right play is to send Silent Cyclone and Revolver Ocelot to the hospital. Get a little too warm over here. Um, sorry about that, Purifier. I might start prioritizing killing you less, because evidently you're not very effective. Alright, I got to reload here to shoot. I have an 81. It's not going to kill... What I want to do is take the kill with Silent Cyclone if I can. I 100% cannot. I'll clear this out with a frag and then let my Reaper try to get the experience because my Reaper's going to be out for a while. They're going to be tired after this and I really, really want my Reapers leveling up fast. They've got Banish and Face off at the end of the tree. They get so, so strong. Just having more aim is already good on them. So the more experience I can stack here on Twilight Queen, the better. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I guess it didn't matter, he had full shield. I was upset about dealing 5 damage to Fortress, but it's not like he gave a shit. You mission debriefing, Cyclone doing almost nothing, getting promoted anyway apparently. Black Cat landing all their shots, getting 3 kills and 23 damage out of it. 
Lunatic Supernova doing almost nothing. Twilight Queen doing a lot of work. Four kills, 19 damage, 100% shot accuracy, just like Black Cat. Liquid Danger at three kills, 23 damage, 75% accuracy. One of the better showings for Marine in terms of offensive output, which is kind of sad. Y yeah, like, of course. Four kills, 42 damage, 11 out of 11, 100%. Anyway, Frantic Nightingale was here. So was Revolver Ocelot, he did a little bit more. Let's get out of here. Alright, back home again. Minimal wounds, I say, as we get two 18-day wounds. Oof. Maybe we'd get less wounds if I actually built medkits and put them on my medics like a adult. Although, honestly, I didn't use the one medkit I have, so this 18-day wound is with triage on Liquid Danger. I don't think he was even beneath 45%, so yeah, that's actually not even part of the problem. Apparently, he's not promoted. That was just in his picture for that, which is kind of funny. Anyway, let's get out of here and see what we got. Two Illyrium cores, a hundred supplies. I think that's mostly from the Resistance contacts. Basic Wildcats, a pile of corpses, an auto-refueling tank, an expanded fuel tank. I'm gonna keep sticking with the uh, increased range. That feels like the best one to me so far. Improved reflex actions. I'm gonna check what that was. Barrier, the one I canceled before, was... Uh, Doubled Psionic and Hack Defense, which would matter in late game, but not now. I have no idea what Improved Reflex Actions is. As soon as I alt-tabbed, I realized I knew exactly what this is. I'm glad I countered it, because it might do nothing as a result of my mod setup. Improved Reflex Actions gives Yellow Alert enemies a higher chance to take Yellow Alert actions. So regardless of whether or not that means that my Yellow Alert mod settings don't work, and now they take Yellow Alert actions, or if this does nothing, Neither of those should be happening, so countering it is the best solution to that specific problem. Coming over to Soldiers. Liquid Danger got a promotion and so did Revolver Ocelot and Frantic Nightingale. Glass Padding. You're a level 1 Demolitionist, or sorry, a level 1 Sapper. It's what you always do. I feel like it's going to be a similar story throughout. Pen them down. Welcome to level 2 as Marines, or I guess level 3 rather. Congratulations, you have point and click cover destruction. Ocelot and Nightingale are ready for another mission. No one else was able to go on another mission immediately after that. Possibly as a result of one of the mods I have affecting Psionics. For some reason, my promotion picture, which I delete all of these, I only want mission pictures and pictures I take. Uh, my promotion picture for Revolver Ocelot has him as a Psionic, which is very weird. Sergeant Face! God, the text on these is ridiculous with code names. Anyway, we're back to the correct number of pictures, which appears to be 20. Ah, uh, way back when, when none of you were in the hospital. 49 crew, huh? Oh, man. We can't hire recruits, so we'll go over limit. The next scientist we get puts us at cap. The next soldier we randomly get puts us at cap. We can't hire anybody because of that. I mean, if people start dying, it sort of solves the problem. Let's just go back to Templar HQ and lick our wounds. Because God knows we need it. This isn't what I wanted to do with my scanning time, but it's what we gotta do. Something will expire and we'll get forced to stop shortly. Alien debris cleared. View of room. Wind it back. Free engineer, give us power. What does an infirmary cost in terms of power? Three? That's fine. Where is my third engineer? It's in the Proving Grounds. It's 46 hours out from finishing a spark. That actually is good for crew roster. Really, really good for crew roster. So I'm going to finish that first and then move them to the infirmary when I start my next experimental project. All right, continuing to heal. The transfer is about to expire, so we have to go do that. Rhino and Apex Disaster are done. With any luck, they'll be back. We got a gas grenade from it and 25 supplies. We have to go do that. Counter Dark Event, Undying Loyalty. The Hunter is... Um, it doesn't have an estimation of when he'll be here. Just as a warning controls region. I thought it would have like presumed or something here. But regardless, we're going to do this. Sit reps largely don't matter. So, from the previous mission, our Sappers and Spark are already here and they're almost certainly staying. Oh my god, we have more than five people left. We can actually do the mission. I actually have enough that I can leave Sapper and Templar and send them out on the Bond mission, maybe, if I'm very lucky. 
I have five sappers ready, so leaving Web Coffin will not be a problem. I'm gonna send my squaddy medic, because they need the experience. Desperately. And if anyone's getting tired, I'd rather it be my lower troops, not my higher troops. So, yeah, squaddy medic. And now the last four get a little bit awkward, because, uh... Would you like soldiers who will be tired immediately? Or would you like... Who are you trying to bond with, Cosmic Sphinx? I'm curious. Thunder Golem, Hulking Cardinal, Wayward Traveler, and Seething Worka. Well, none of them are on this mission, I'm sorry. <laughs> Iron Rhino is finally coming out of her field duty. They're up to 15 mobility. Iron Rhino is actually at the same mobility as Shrapnel Flurry now. They start off too lower than Combat Engineers because Assaults being classes with Slash and Run and Gun have lower mobility to try to balance them a little bit. It seems counterintuitive, but that's just the way it is. So, do I want more Sappers or a Field Medic? I'm really tempted to run Blazing Bull and Hidden Cube because I don't want to have a squad without a Field Medic, right? I want to hold Lead Coffin and my Templar to bond them on that Covert Op. That does mean I'm running a four Sapper mission. What's our current bond level between these two look like? I could just like repeatedly send them out on missions to get them high enough, right? That is a much more sensible, rational option to take. Because my Templar is at full will, Lead Coffin's at full will. Instead of sending out whoever's higher ranked here, I might want to send out... Yeah, I could send out Hidden Cube, he's only missing 5 will, probably still be ready. You might end up tired no matter what if I send you out without full will. But this is just a good way to test if that's how it works, so I'm going to send him. Boy, that's a lot of sappers. This is the angriest squad I've ever fielded, holy shit. We have a field medic, four sappers, an assault, a templar, and a pioneer. We blow up cover, and we run at you, and we have one dude to make sure that we don't die. Now, on the subject of the one dude whose job it is to make sure we don't die, let's actually build some med kits like adults. The fact that I haven't done this yet, and I'm suffering from wounds, is kind of hilarious, like that's the reason why. I don't have more med kits for triage, it's making my wound timers worse. I have a hard time imagining that isn't the case. So, take the med kit, please. Also, I'll be back with you once I've done everything else. We have to unequip a lot of stuff and cut out a whole new squad. All right, I'm done fiddling with it. I'm happy with our weapon mods, I'm happy with our equipment. This is one of the more like extensively kitted out squads I've had in a while. With our sappers, we got a frost bomb on Frantic Nightingale. We have a flashbang and a gas grenade on Lead Coffin, and he actually gets three of each of these. This is his grenade pocket item, so it gets duplicates, and he has concussive grenades for duplicates here. I've got an additional flashbang on my Templar. I've got all the sniper kit and the tracer rounds on Cosmic Sphinx. I don't feel like I tend to be at long enough range, especially in a sewer, to justify some bow rounds. Going right back to the sewers, it seems. Finally have a med kit on a medic like you'd expect, and then outside that is just a whole shitload of grenades. Tomorrow we're getting back into the sewers, sabotaging the transmitter, Cancelling two dark events with almost no troops to spare. It's been tough, but I think we are going to make it through the fatigue spiral. And by the end of the month, we're going to be ready for a whole new batch of covert ops and to do it all over again, because there's going to be three more dark events and we're probably going to want to cancel at least two of them. Might not go for it this time, though. We might want to hold off on cancelling one of them and just, like, progress the game, go hunt the Chosen or something. But all of that's decision-making for another day. I've been Rather Coherent, I hope you're enjoying the series, and I'll see you in the next one.